San Andreas Fault just was struck, and this is close by the area where the volcanic fields are. And you can see right here, the swarm was recorded next to the geothermal field. And there's a lot of geothermal fields in here that we need to look at right now because the recent earthquakes next to the San Andreas Fault tells us that this is a larger situation going on here that is not widely being covered yet. You can see here there was a 4.0, you can see, and then there was also a 3.8. This is all coming today. We got to get down into the observatory Earth scope and let you see that this is actually some of the San Andreas fault stress zones. And you can see where low stress is in yellow, and you can see where high stress is in red. We also have to get to today the threat zones of what happens if this situation moves a little further uh, with the volcano fields because the San Andreas fault system is closely related to the Clear Lake volcanic field influencing the formation and ongoing activity. So while it's not directly linked, the cracks in the faults, the broader systems, the craters, they allow for magma to rise and erupt. So we're going to look deeper into this. We're going to give you a mapped out situation here because I don't see people covering this today. And I feel like this is very important. All these areas are stress zones, as you see right now. Now we're going to look specifically at the area Clear Lake Volcanic Field because this is exactly where the situation was struck at. You got the USGS, they go out there and they observe this. But the thing about this Clear Lake Volcanic Field, and I'm going to show you right here all the different ins and outs to it. There is no live camera for it, everybody. There is not one at all. So I was going to tap into the live feed for you and let you see what was going on today, but we can't see. But here's what we can do. Let's look into this right now. Here is the location as we speak of where this earthquake hit. Here it is. All the red zones are where the volcanic fields are. These are all the areas right here by Clear Lake. Now, Clear Lake Volcanic Field in California is closely related to San Andreas Fault. So the bends in the fault and the fractures influence magma pathways. And the Clear Lake area is part of a broader zone of the faulting associated with the transform tectonic boundary between the Pacific and North American plates. And what we're seeing, though, right now, we're starting to see along this whole Pacific ring of fire, a lot of different activity up peak. Now, let's look underneath the geyser here really quick where Clear Lake is. Now, you can see if we look really closely here, you can see Clear Lake is to the right. Mount Hannah is there and we look down, we see silicate particle and we got partial melt zones right there. And these are where the lava flows and everything else is. So when San Andreas has a stress situation, San Andreas actually is a part of the reasoning we get the earthquakes. And then what happens with this can influence a lot of different situations coming up and more. Now, looking at this right here, let's look at this USGS situation. Based on this, we created a map. You can see the central risk area of ash fallout. Let's say at the lowest point will look like this. So you need to take these maps and you subscribe to get more information for this. But the 24 hour ash fall threat zone would look worse. That's if we got the worst scenarios where you get the not only one activation of Clear Lake Volcano, but multiple activations from different sizes over there. And that's only in the worst case scenario. We're giving you that because in case San Andreas does have a scenario, you're not just looking at subduction, subduction uh, situations. You're looking at situations where you have a little bit of the volcano, uh, volcanic fields activate. So we're going to go into a little bit more because there is another side here to this story uh, that we want to bring up. And if you look right here, the Rogers Creek Fault is actually right next to the San Andreas Fault as well. And you got the Hayward Fault. These all link across these areas, which is very highly important that we pay attention to because the San Andreas Fault is going to be a leading scenario behind all these volcanoes. And as far as early, USGS came out and said on August 5th that all the California volcano activity was normal, but there has not been a new update since because this is a newer update we're here at august what are we currently at 14th here 
they can't update on there and let's move into this because i was telling y'all magma was shifting from the coco's plate and the coco's plate obviously is from latin america all the way up and they actually came out and confirmed what i was saying you can see this from august 4th 2025 they're saying it's moving eastward though and this is a magma pretty much channel that goes all the way from latin america and it goes all the way up past san andreas fault in other areas and it can go up along the whole ring of fire as we speak and so when we've looked at it recently we also seen this tsunami like glacier situation that's happening in alaska right along that pacific area so this is a connecting situation here and usgs released the camera feed and they're talking about how a tsunami that was like 100 feet above sea level alex bennett assistant professor at university alaska fairbanks told daily mail events like this can be triggered in a number of ways including seismic activity ground thawing or heavy rainfall this didn't happen by an earthquake y'all they was like well this is kind of strange that this got triggered like this so now they're saying ground thawing is causing this in rainfall but why are they not looking into the underground magma channels because there are volcanoes also in alaska and this is another scenario i'm looking into lots of different things going on but this hundred feet high tsunami alaska uh, had this glacier collapse and they're saying that in multiple areas like populations close to these areas this could be another scenario that we could be dealing with uh, in zones like this so that's why we're going to be looking more into all these upgrading scenarios because this is going to tell us a lot about the oncoming situation the clear volcanic fields that we're looking at though this is right here in california this is going to be widely something that's going to be done by san andreas fall we're looking at that uh, a lot of people keep asking me about yellowstone and how will it tie into the bigger picture yellowstone has its own situation yes and that's in a whole other scenario along the continental rift zone which we're going to be definitely diving deeper into now reading just a little bit more oh if the ash in a 24-hour ash fall i meant to tell y'all this, this is important now obviously if it starts if if the the wind direction is pushing it towards the left and it goes towards the ocean this could impact fisheries food webs impacts on phytoplankton based on usgs data uh it's, this can cause ships in the ocean as well and obviously if the ash fall fall towards us that will cause it to be a colder winter also uh when the new madrid situation was happening with the military which is a video i just put out which a lot of people not getting the information on that which i will drop right here in the live chat for you right now because um this is very important they said that they're looking at infrastructure collapse as well they're looking at situations like that so uh watch next military moves in new madrid fault disaster warning that's in the live chat as we speak right now if there's any other video you should watch it's that because we went and got into the uh, video archives and everything else looked at what they released and that was august 6 2025 so we've seen north carolina or in those other areas they're talking about they've had a earthquake and it's been like 125 years since they've seen anything like that we're going to pull that up real quick though so you can see it the magma flow movements though i think really is playing a big factor into all these situations here that we're just not getting much information on uh, and it's because we don't have live models for that so here it is right here Horry county experiences the first nearby earthquake in at least 125 years so we're dealing with a lot of different situations here that are cooking up and heating up if we go back to the volcanic field or this earthquake today three of them as a matter of fact there's other volcanic field areas you can look at right here so this is little borax lake near mar and the thing is, is this is another one right there in California. So this is like clear view is all in the same area. And yeah, right now, the magma movement and everything underneath there has shifted, but we don't get to see the real updated models about all these shifts happening. So this is going to be something that's going to be a situation with this map of Rogers Creek fault. Like I said, this is right next to San Andreas fault as well. You can see how the land here 
uh, looks like it has upwelling situations happening. That's when you see the land kind of like bulge upwards when you got upwelling. The question is, what is causing this upwelling? Is it just the plates or is it some type of volcanic situation as well? We got to find out more about that. And we will be looking deeper into this because diving into the magma movements and everything else is really going to tell us really how the tectonic shift of 2025 is happening. We've seen a huge shift. You know, if you felt anything during these situations in California, because I, I find it strange that the news didn't put out anything yet. And I find it strange that it wasn't a video clip put out about anything as well. So I'm diving deeper into this as we go. So here's a big story that really, though, changes the whole narrative. The question is, why was the military in the New Madrid area not really giving us much details? And they said they don't think it's going to happen. They know it's going to happen. And so it seems that they know a lot more here because this is, to me, getting to a level to where they're not just sounding like they're pretty much unsure. It sounds like they're pretty sure of the situations coming at hand. So the underground areas where they use the boreholes and stuff like that, as well as how they're detecting everything. Uh, this is how they're detecting everything here. And they're looking at that with the San Andreas fault. And with more situations start to develop, this is going to be really one of the huge scenarios that you're going to want to stay paying attention to. So you want to subscribe right now to JWTV. We're getting out all the information. A lot of people kind of overlooking because this is going to be a scenario that's going to play out over time. But as we as community here get everything to each other, we're going to find out more about the situations. Now, you look on the left hand side that New Madrid video will be there and also will be in the comment section as well. I like to hear what's going on with your area so we can keep locating situations. Thank